Hi everyone, today I wanted to check out this new AI empowered app that essentially takes long form video content in the horizontal format and chunks it down into a number of vertical videos. The advantage to educators in this approach is that it creates little chunks of information that you can flexibly distribute, um, especially friendly for the mobile phone delivery and it increases accessibility by automatically generating subtitles on these videos. So let's dive in and see what this app is about. Okay, so Opus Clips is the name of the software and the website here explains what it's about. It takes one long video and here it says it creates 10 viral clips. We're not so much interested in being viral as in being accessible to our students. So we're chunking down content. How do we do that? I'll go into details in a moment. But basically, it takes a, a curation approach. So this could be um, an existing video that's not yours that you want to chunk down, or it can be something that you've created and you want to create small pieces of it, bring pieces out. Here it says that the algorithm, um, the AI algorithm can select the appropriate and relevant pieces. Um, in the videos. It creates a score here to see how viral um, these clips could be. I'm a bit dubious about this and don't think it's too important for our purposes. And there's a co-pilot in there that you can direct the AI with a little bit more um, instruction. And the nice thing that I like is that it creates these um, subtitles automatically um, and they can be edited to rectify if they're not correct. Um, and it highlights the words, the keywords in your videos. It creates emojis as well, um, which I think I removed from the test one that I did, but that's a personal preference thing. Okay, so let's dive into this software and see what it can do. And for demonstration today, I'm gonna to use two different types of video. One, I'm gonna use a long um, video that I've curated from TED. So this is a video on building creative confidence. And it's around 12 minutes long. And I've always found this video is a little bit too long. So I'm gonna see if the software can bring out the key chunks of the video. And again, when it creates these vertical videos, I can distribute them through TikTok, um, through YouTube Shorts, through Instagram Reels, or through a, a learning management system. So I'm thinking about using these chunks of video uh, as maybe a pre-learning content that in a flipped learning approach. So students would engage with them before the session starts. Um, and I'm also gonna use a video that I've created. So I like to create videos, um, you know, the top 10 or five, five tips, five approaches, six models. So I'm gonna take one of these videos and see if it can actually pull out those five tips and deliver them again in this more flexible way. So the first starting point for us is to sign in. So I'm just gonna sign up here. And I'm just gonna use, link it to my Google account. Okay, it tells me here that I can drop a video link in, or I can drop something from my hard drive, and it gives me advice on the types of videos that work well and things that don't really work. And you can see down here, I did have an experiment earlier on where I dropped in a video of mine that was 10 tips for successful active learning. And it did quite a good job of breaking this video down. It's given it a title. Um, it's given it a description. It's, this is the, the score about how viral it could be. I can tell you it wasn't anywhere near as viral as this would suggest. Um, but if we give it a, a quick play. Tip one is to create a safe learning environment. Okay, so it did it did an okay job. Uh, this is the low resolution preview. And when I download it, I get the HD version that again, I can distribute through TikTok, through Instagram Reels, um, through YouTube Shorts, etc. Every time it generates a video like this, it uses credits. And you can see that I'm still on the free trial here. And, and I've got, um, two hours, 19 minutes worth of, of, of credits left. So obviously I'll put that 11 minute video in there. It will reduce it from this time. And while I'm still in the free trial, it doesn't uh, put a watermark or anything on the video. So I can create this content, download it, 
and use it um, without subscribing. Overall, I was quite impressed with the approach. So let's see how it handles um, this video. So I'm going to copy the URL. I'm gonna go back to the homepage and just paste it in here. And I'm gonna say get clips. I can give it um, some direction. I can ask it to automatically identify the clips or I can say, you know, look for, make the clips 30 to 60 seconds or guide it with some keywords, etc. I'm just gonna hand it over to the AI and, and see what it can do. In this case, it doesn't need any translation. It's, I think there's a translation option in there um, and the subtitles I want to be in English. Okay, so it gives me an estimated waiting time here of 12 minutes. Um, I did see something that they're working on the program um, throughout August of 2023 to ensure that all requests, regardless of how long the video is, is processed. I think they said within five minutes, um, but that's an ongoing um, evolution of the approach. So this is gonna take 12 minutes, although it seems to be doing it a lot faster. The waiting time's gone down there, but I might just stop the video. It's gonna email me once it's complete and I'll jump back in once it's ready. Okay, so after around five minutes, I got a nice email to say my clip is ready. So I've gone back to the software here and it looks like it's created the chunks of information, uh, seven overall. Let me turn my video off so we can see a bit more clearly. Okay, so if we take a look at what we've got here, it's created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chunks out of this video. Um, and to give them a title and to give them a, an overview and a, and a score. Um, let's see what he has to say here. You as kind of thought leaders, it would be really great if you didn't let people divide the world into the creatives and the non-creatives like it's some God-given thing. And to have people realize that they're naturally creative, you know, and that those natural people should let their ideas fly. Okay, so that's one of the key messages that I aim to uh, derive from this TED Talk. And if I click edit here, um, it's given me some options. You can see which, which words um, it's not using. Then maybe I want to include this, so I'm gonna set that as a start. Um, and that's gonna give me a slightly different um, selection. And they just make better decisions. And they just make better decisions. So I know at TED you're supposed to have a change the world kind of thing, isn't that everybody has a change the world thing? Okay. And if I'm happy with that, I can save and it's gonna create that chunk again, but it's a little bit longer, now it's 50 seconds. Okay. So that's how it's handled uh, an existing video, uh, a TED talk. What about one of my videos? And let's take, um, let's take five, Art of Reflective Practice. Now this wasn't a very um, highly produced video. Didn't spend a lot of time on this, but let's see what it can do with it. Can it pick out those um, five different R's that are related to this activity? So again, I'm gonna leave it to auto. I'm just gonna click and leave that for five to 10 minutes. I'll say it's five minutes this time because it's much smaller. Okay, so we're back after around five, six minutes this time, and I can immediately see that it hasn't quite gone according to plan. And I think um, one of the reasons for this is that visually, um, this probably wasn't the best video to choose in the sense of it is a, um, a screen recording of a, of a slide with me just in the corner there. But let's see what we can do with what we have. So. That's if, if I click on uh, one of these clips. Still said we need to move away from a predominantly teacher-led approach to education in which the students are passive recipients. And we need to move towards a more learner-centered approach to education. Okay, so it's the audio that's the key here. Um, and the visual is just backing things up. So if I just... Um, turn myself off for a moment. I can see that the, the, the visual that's been selected is cropped like this. But maybe I can just bring it down. Okay, that looks a little bit better, I think. So when it's saved, it will just cut off here. 
Um, and again, I'm not too worried for this one because it is the audio that's the main thing, but I do think it would have worked better um, if it was like a talking head video um, with not much to not too much going on in the background. Okay, so that's updated. And to develop a skill set, we need to move away from a predominantly teacher-led approach to education in which the students are passive recipients. And it's filling the, the frame now at least, but it still didn't really have the effect I was hoping for. And, I, and again, I think that's because um, it was a screen recording. Now, if I go back to one of the test ones that I started with, the 10 tips for successful active learning, this turned out uh, a lot better, I think, because it did split those tips down. Like you see there, tip one, create a safe learning environment. Tip um, one is to create a safe learning environment. And because it's not a screen recording, it's someone talking to a camera, I think it has a better um, look about it. Okay, so if I want to download this clip, I simply click to download. Um, it goes onto my hard drive and it's in a higher definition. Tip one is to than the preview. And I can then take this file, I can put it into um, TikTok, as mentioned, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts. Um, I can put it directly into a learning management system to give that flexibility of distribution. And what I really like about this is that those subtitles have been automatically generated to increase the accessibility even further. So, you know, for example, students could be on their phone um, coming into your learning experience. They might not even have access to sound. They can still, you know, watch the video and review the text um, on their screens. So I think this is a great tool for breaking down long form content into small manageable chunks and getting it in front of your learners. Let me know in the comments below if you would use this in any other ways. I'm interested to think about new and novel education use cases for this tool. Thank you very much.